a discovery is always the key and then obviously building on the discovery that that keeps your momentum going despite what the gold price is you always need a good discovery uh, you know mariana was a great uh, a great example of that Well, hello, welcome to Assay TV. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Glenn Parsons, who is the CEO of Awale Resources. Hi, Glenn, great to see you today. Um, for, to start things off, uh, if you could just give us a sort of um, a little bit of an overview of, of, of Awale and some of the background to the company. Um, you and some of your team previously with Mariana, where you had some success uh, there. And so, as I mentioned, some, some of the team and some of the investors followed you to Awale, yeah? Yeah, thanks, Leah. Nice to be here. Um, yeah, so, I mean, uh, Awali really was uh, spawned from, from Mariana Resources, which I was the, the CEO of. And, uh, you know, the team, essentially the team has come across, uh, specifically the Awali team or the West African team has really formed uh, the basis of the core. So that's uh, Andrew Chubb, who was the project manager at Mariana. He's now the CIO here. Um, and then in country, we certainly have a, a nice Ivorian team that we had developed at Mariana that's called, kept together as well. So, you know, we operate as a, as a nice Ivorian um, uh, story. Uh, in terms of management side, you know, we've got uh, Eric Roth, who was my CEO at uh, Mariana, uh, certainly on the board and helps me out from a technical perspective within, uh, within Awali. Um, and if you're coming to, to support, so as you know, Mariana was bought by Sandstorm. Uh, in 2017, and effectively we we bought these assets out of uh, Sandstorm and floated them and listed on in Canada, and uh, you know uh, Sandstorm said that they would be uh, a shareholder and support us, and uh, the good thing is you know through every single raise Sandstorm has certainly supported supported us um, strongly all the way through. So we really are very appreciative of that. And we've actually been able to, on the back of them really, is also sort of build some of our other investors, um, you know, new investors coming in. And we do have a number of, of smaller funds that actually have come from Mariana as well. So, so you know, the story continues in a different form um, from Mariana now with, uh, with the Awali West African assets. These assets came, you know, they really were at the time Mariana, they were, they were Greenfields assets, really basically barren land very little exploration. We had a little bit of exploration up at ODE from Rangold in the 90s. But besides that, you know, we really started from scratch, like the properties. They looked like there was a lot of gold, a lot of artisanal activity on, on, on the properties. They are very large areas. We've got nice district scale. Um, the key thing for us was always, have we got an ability to, to build a, a really big story? That was really our aim. And that's certainly what we have at Bonduku, which we call our flagship exploration asset. However, ODE, you know, has probably surpassed, uh, surpassed uh, in terms of advancement, in terms of we have the discovery at ODE, and uh, it's moving along at its own steam. So we sort of had a, a nice inflection point. We see ourselves, you know, momentum changing of being able to operate two, two projects and uh, certainly build what we think is going to be a good story for the future. Let's drill down deeper into those projects, so to speak. Let's start with ODNA. You've just had some results there at the uh, Charger uh, prospect, I believe, but your initial focus was at the Empire prospect. Tell us a little bit about, about some of the details about the project. Yeah, so, so I mean, uh, well, if we just talk about ODNA in general, I mean, you know, we've, we've started there pretty much on a systematic approach. Again, as I said, you know, it was Greenfield's exploration uh, fundamentally. So really just doing, you've got to just do the legwork, uh, the groundwork at the end of the day. Uh, we started with streams, you know, we followed up those anomalies with soil sampling programs. Then we followed up uh, again with, uh, oh, then from that, we actually started, uh, we, we drilled, we drilled at, at Empire and we drilled at uh, Vakaba, which are the two southern, southern uh, prospects within the old uh, ODNE permit, where we had the success at Empire, Maine. Um, Empire Main, we, you know, basically our first hole, we had a discovery hole, really exciting high grade. We see Empire as a high grade um, de deposit at the end of the day. It sits within a nice mineralized corridor and the mineralized cor corridor actually incorporates Charger. That's why that's where I'm leading to. So we see it's sort of a, it's a 10 kilometer uh, north, I mean, east-west uh, trending corridor at about three, four kilometers wide and really, pretty much anomalous over that entire 
uh, a corridor. And we've been doing work, systematic work in the background, as well as focused work on Empire Main, where we've had this uh, development of, of, a, of a nice high grade, shallow plunge, deep plunge, uh, visible gold, fine, you know, fine grain visible gold in fresh rock. Um, we've done, you know, nice met testing on it. It's, it's, it's really, it's nicely leachable. So the recoveries are good and it's really building up as a good base for, uh, you know, a high grade base for, for, for building a resource at the end of the day. Um, we plan to have a resource statement out in Q1. Mm -hmm. um, the idea is, you know, as a company, we certainly aren't looking for subsistence deposits. That's not what we're about. You know, we, we really believe in, in, in developing uh, a multi-million ounce uh, district. Uh, and we see both ODNE and Bonduku certainly have that ability. Just talking about ODNE, ODNE is 400 square kilometers mm. of, of, of tenement size. So it's a, it's a large property. We have the four, another 400 square kilometers adjacent and the corridor plus the trends all go straight into, into the trend all the way into, into uh, Guinea. So the setting is really, you know, really obviously optimal uh, for what we what we are actually trying to achieve. Absolutely, and a number of other miners sort of along the whole the whole trend, yeah. Yeah, well, um, mines mines that we don't there there are no real mines around us, but there's certainly things uh, things happening. You know, it really is a, a sort of a happening belt. There's the north south belt, which is, and we splay off to the west off that at uh, going off into Guinea. But to the if it's splaying off to the east. About 200 kilometers south, you've got Rocks Gold Segula deposit or project, uh, which is made up of five, you know, sort of around five um, high, smaller high grade deposits making up, making up uh, what they say is going to be a mine in the future. So that's certainly an exciting project. And we, we probably see an, a, an analogy to that in a way of, of high grade deposits uh, coming together to form what we would want a million ounces, a million ounces plus. Mm. And ODNA, you said it's sort of 400 uh, square kilometres, but uh, Bonduku, it's, it's even bigger, yeah? Uh, tell us a little yeah, about that mean, project. That's right. I mean, Bonduku, you know, that's why we, we actually started our, our work when, when, we, when we listed in, um, in 2017. Uh, that's, where, or to, yeah, that's where we effectively um, commenced our, our real exploration work. And uh, Bonduku is 1,200 square kilometers of granted tenements. So it's three tenements of basically 400 each. And then we have a number of strategic applications around there. On Bonduku, just to give you an idea of the scale that we're talking about, you know, we're talking uh, 80 kilometers of known mineralized trend of which we've, we have actually worked 60 of those, that entire trend, 60 kilometers. And, you know, our main technique, which has really proved pretty advantageous is is obviously soils if it works, or really moving along with uh, auger and punching down three, four uh, meters down, taking an in situ geochemical sample and testing for gold. And that's really highlighted multiple, multiple zones. Four prospects along uh, Codio, uh, which look really exciting. Codio is probably more typical of uh, an orogenic type shear hosted system. Um, you know, we, we, we do see the ability to build uh, um, ounces and sort of long, long strike lengths. Uh, generally, you know, you probably find it is lower grade, but however, we still, we still our, our motto is still chase the high grade. And if you get the low grade, well, that's that only going to build, build ounces as well. You know, so um, the idea is so, so we're waiting on those results from Codio. Moving a little bit to the west of Kodio, we have the Samanda, which we drilled as well. Samanda is actually more, more similar to, to what we have at ODNE. There's a, large, there's a large granite contact, and it's along this granite contact that we see in this deformation zone, um, breccia zone, and the are shears folding. And you know, we had a very nice anomaly there, which was very, very similar to what we had at ODNE. So, so that, those results are also, we're waiting on that. And then it's just the rest of the targets, you know. As I say, it's just it's just ranking those targets, building them up, drill ready, and then and then testing them, and then being able to either move on or hopefully extend and expand, uh, you know, to to some form of resource. Mm. And what's the process of prioritizing these targets? Because as you mentioned, you've got a, a huge area there and uh, extensive, uh, you know, a large number of targets. How do you prioritize? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's of, from a geological perspective, uh, you know, the guys obviously trying, you know, you really are trying to assess which one is going to deliver at the end of the day, but it's not always it's not always your your highest anomaly that delivers. It's you know, there's some subtle subtle nuances 
cross-cutting structures, you know, it might be moving off to the side or whatever. So we try, we, we, we try and obviously demarcate, as I say, by auger uh, to give us a, a, a footprint of a target. And then we try and infill further to try and see, can we actually narrow it down that we've really got confidence that we're actually over the zone. As you unfold one, you develop an understanding of the geology, that type of system, or the only system different to the Bonduku system. You know, the, the, just what's what's happening with the rocks. We've got a lot of intrusion at Odieni, uh, which gives us different settings. Whereas, you know, at, at Bonduku, there's probably been a lot more strain on the rocks just in terms of the, the regional shear that's there. So, so you do try and uh, work with, uh, as your understanding grows, it, it means you reassess all your targeting and you move forward. Absolutely. So how much drilling are you hoping to do this year? We've done about 7,000 metres at, at um in total on both, about 3,000 metres at uh, Odieni, four, four and a half thousand metres at, at Kodio to date. And now moving back to Odieni with the, with the rig to go and do some follow-up on our uh, on, on Charger and then hopefully on the extensions to um, Empire Main. So we've got the Empire Main, what we call is close to a deposit, and then you've got the gap area and then to the west where we were testing for extensions of the main zone, which is that high grade zone that we're really looking at. So there's there's around 3000 meters of, of, dr of drilling still to do now. We go into the wet season. Um, so that'll take, you know, and that really starts, I mean, rains are starting for sure. Um, July, August, and September is probably starts abating a little bit, hopefully if uh, weather patterns uh, stay true. And, you know, it, ideally we'd like to be back drilling uh, specifically Bonduku, definitely you know, October, November, December, which is the dry season. Odieni, the nice thing is we can actually drill it all year round because of the infrastructure being very close to tar roads, easy to get access to the, the property. But so you've got lots of sort of assays pending um, and then and then hopefully more drilling uh, in the in the autumn. I mean, in terms of, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots, lots more assays pending. I mean, we've got, you know, we've got uh, Empire mains you know, around the main zone. And then from there, you're moving to Kodio, where we've got, where we've drilled four targets uh, and they're all pretty, pretty large targets. And then we've gone to Samanda, which is also in the Bonduku area. So we've got five, five prospects out of, out of um, Bonduku that have been drilled that we're waiting on. So those results, uh, we, it will, we'll probably we'll start getting those in some in early you know early July, uh, all the way through to end of July, um, and then um, we'll be back. We, we as I say we're back into ODNE now. So post those, we'll have the next phase of ODNE coming post that. So there's there's a lot of there are a lot of assays and a lot of uh, you know results coming, and uh, there'll probably be a lot of anticipation excitement uh, uh, over those. Mm, absolutely. And I guess the, 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 the gap in drilling during the rainy season, it allows you to get those results in and then have a real sort of, uh, you know, identifying the, the, the correct targets to be drilling uh, when you can get going again. Yeah, no, that, I mean, from an exploration perspective, it's great because it gives you that time to actually work on what you've got and try and understand it better. You know, you can work with, you know, you can do some more test work. You can work with your XRF. You can try and try and understand it a bit better, see what are the correlations, some of those pathfinders. Um, you know, once once we into if we know the system's there, it's resource drilling. Uh, we can drill at any time and just just punch those holes out, really, with the focus of getting you know getting the resource. So that's why I say you know, uh, ODNE, we we do have the ability if if we if we think we're on it, uh, we can we can push through even in a rainy season, and that's so that's quite nice. So that, there's quite a nice balance to the portfolio in terms of you know being able to keep momentum going first of all. But actually, you know, and not just keep momentum, it's actually grow accretively, I think, at the end of the day. Mm, absolutely. And in terms of funding all of this, uh, how's your, uh, you know, cash in the bank looking and, and how are your investors uh, looking? Oh, no, well, OK, that's that's a good point. I mean, we raised, you know, we raised three odd million in May. Um, so obviously that was for the drilling uh, in terms of investors. The nice thing we're seeing, um, and again, it probably sort of leads towards, you know, are we at, at a at a a changing or uh, an inflection point from 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 a Wiley's perspective. At the end of the day, you know, we we were a junior greenfields explorer, and in you know in a in a volatile gold market, that's probably quite you know is certainly quite uh, is, is quite hard to gain momentum. But the nice thing is now we're sort of seeing ourselves. People can actually see 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 that as discovery and the ability to grow the discovery. Um, the you know in terms of 
uh, you know, the, the typical resource curve, if you want to call it, you know, a discovery is always the key. And then obviously building on the discovery, you know, that, that keeps your momentum going, despite what the gold price is, you always need a good discovery. Uh, you know, Mariana was a great, uh, a great example of that. The hot modern deposit, you know, we, it, was in a, it wasn't in the best gold price market. Uh, we were in Turkey, but it was still a great deposit. You don't get great, you know, many great deposits. So, and, that's, and that really comes down to the core of what Diwali is in the sense of we, we are a district scale player. We've got ground, you know, we've had first move advantage in Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, we were able to pick up nice areas. They were underexplored, yes, but they still were very nice areas. Uh, and we think that we have the ability to uncover uh, the little exploration that was done there in, in the past. You know, Cote d'Ivoire was an underexplored territory um, up to 2000 and whatever, 15. You know, you could pick up land in 2015. Now, very difficult to pick up licenses in, in, in Cote d'Ivoire. And just because of the focus of, of the region, uh, underexplored, we've had a lot of discoveries come in. There's been a lot of exploration, and we, we're at the forefront of that exploration. So we've got a good team, and uh, yeah, it's a good place to be. Lots of, lots of exciting prospects uh, you're looking into uh, this year, and I expect lots of news flow uh, for the rest of the year. Uh, but thank you very much, uh, Glenn, for joining us today and giving some update on, on Awale Resources. Thanks, Jeff.